Hello, everyone. Welcome to ASM's first official panel discussion. Today, we're going to discuss the hot topic, US election and its impact on humans, other animals, and the planet. So Gwena, would you like to introduce our guests? Yes, yes. So I'm going to introduce first the amazing Connie Spence. Connie is the founder of both Vegan Justice League and the Agricultural Fairness Alliance. We also have Joe Coleman, AKA Vegan Monk. I think you also go by Monk Eternal as well. Uh, he's an author, transformational coach, and natural pro and physique bodybuilder. We also have Varun Verlan, who is the digital media coordinator and activist with Animal Safe Group. And myself, Gwena Hunter, the founder of Vegans for Black Lives Matter, Vegans of LA, and also the ASM coordinator for the Animal Safe Group as well. So everybody, welcome and thank you so much. Yeah. This, this conversation is timely, it's needed, it's perfect. Um, all of us come with so many different perspectives um, and we all have the same goal in mind. And I think it's always important that even though someone may have um, a different medium or path to get there because you have to hit on all points. And I would really, because we have Connie only for 30 minutes, so she's blessing us with her presence for 30 minutes. So I'm going to start with Connie, who is really, she really opened my eyes to, I, I don't like politics. Um, I never have, probably never will, but some of the things that she broke down helped me to understand who to point at and who to go after and whose fault it is for so many different things. So um, I like to start with Connie and we'll talk about why veganism is political. Yeah, I mean, thanks Gwenna and thanks Varun for having me. Um, as you know, I, I mean, you guys know personally, but I can share this with the, the chat group. Um, so I founded Vegan Justice League and Agriculture Fairness Alliance. I actually have been vegan for, um, a little over 10 years and I wasn't somebody that started out doing activism. I have to say I was someone who took a while. And, you know, as we go into these elections, you know, a lot of vegans have actually made friends through activism, which I did as well. And I've done a lot of activism. Some might know the vegan Batman light. And I love activism. Uh, one of the things that, again, this election is proving is that there's a lot of systems in place that penetrate our daily lives. And so just taking ethical stances, like you're not racist, okay. Um, you know, you're not sexist, okay. Um, you don't eat animals because you, you know, you think it's unethical to kill them, okay. Well, how do you actually achieve the goal that you have, whether it's racism, sexism, um, you know, liberating animals, liberating humans. The reality is, is there's systems involved. And so the U.S. election today provides a glimpse in at that. Um, we have two candidates that are very, very different. They go after very different people, very different states. You see the red states. You see where they're, you know, where the red states exist. Many of the red states is, is farmland. Um, and there's huge differences with the two presidents. And so Going back to activism and then bringing it back to today, I mean, the reality is, is that I really wanted to believe that being vegan alone would signal animals to get saved. But we need to be very clear about the opponent. Big ag is entrenched in the founding of this country and many political, um, you know, political presidents and even local elections. Do we really think that they wouldn't block us with systems to save animals? It's money. They don't want us taking that money. So I found out through a lot of research and data that actually what's happening is while we can make an ethical decision about what we consume and where our dollar goes to, we actually can't make that much of an ethical decision about how our taxes are used. So our taxes are actually being taken and robbed from us to undermine our consumer dollars. And they've been doing it for several years, but really, really heightened during Trump's presidency. His track record in the last four years, 
the last three of the four, he has given the largest bailouts in history to big agriculture. Some of you might ask why. Well, his voting pool, the people that he wants to vote for him that have a very strong connection to electoral votes are farmers. And so by bailing them out with our taxes, he undermines our veganism, but ultimately he's buying votes. So we can expect that the next four years, obviously we're in a moment we don't know who's elected, but we can expect mm -hmm. in the next four years, the same thing happening. So we probably see on social media all over the place that vegans can vote for Trump or we're inclusive and we welcome Trump voters. And it's like, okay, well, let's, let's be realistic, right? If somebody is voting for Trump, are, what are they voting for? Are they voting for policies that, that move us forward as a vegan movement or actually block us? And the answer is, and I can give a bunch of stats to back it up, that we are being blocked. So I think that it's important. And you know, I don't know if anyone wants to comment on that. Um, I was just be giving some space and time because I'm, you know, talking straight through. But I think um, yeah. as, as a, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, do you think that would be the exact same outcome if Biden were elected? Because we're talking about what happened with one versus with the other. No, um, because Biden doesn't need their votes. So he doesn't need to congratulate them and say, oh, you voted for me. So okay. now I have to do this back for you. Also, Biden and Biden and Harris have have said several times that they want to reduce the monopolies in agriculture and that which which de de um i it it de-strengthens agriculture's stronghold and it dismantles mm -hmm. that monopolized power um and then biden and harris are also really forward with pushing through um you know uh, the Green New Deal, obviously it's going to shift and change, but they've said many times that they want to make sure to reduce emissions and things like that. And so so Trump is not doing that. And in fact, Pence, when Pence was was, um, you know, speaking to a crowd of farmers during during, um, you know, when he's like trying to encourage voting, he basically said as literally as possible that that Harris and Biden will take your meat away. So yes. this is not sensationalizing stuff. They literally need the agriculture vote and they are pandering to that vote by giving them all our taxes. And it's not the same as other presidents in the past. It's not the same mm -hmm. as what Biden's gonna do. Can I predict that Biden won't change his mind in four years? No, I can't, but he doesn't, he has no reason to mm -hmm. pander to um to the electoral votes of farmers that's just not his base okay all right excellent thank you for that that's um you know when you first introduced that information to me i had no idea because i thought you know like you were saying before that we were saving animals and then to find out that they're still being slaughtered at the exact same rate and higher it was really uh hard, hard. disheartening very disheartening. So thank you for that, Connie. Um, Monk, so you come at this from more of a up on the clouds <laughs> kind of, you you did a post today that had like hundreds of comments on there. You have people on there that are for Trump and that are, just read the comments on that thread was just like mind blowing. Tell us what you're thinking about this upcoming election and, and what it means. Well, well, first of all, I, I'm, I'm completely for peace and unity and love and compassion when it comes to all beings. Um, through my own personal transformation is how I got to this place. And doing so, I, you know, I, raising your consciousness, you start to see things you've never seen before. I think even as a person of color, as, as a black person, sometimes we don't even see the system clearly that's putting us in our place. Mm -hmm. You know, we should, no one should ever have to come to this planet and show up on this planet and suffer just because you showed up looking like this. You see what I'm saying? We mm -hmm. just show up looking like this. From day one, we're paying the price 
are looking like this. And we don't even know it, right? And I think that's how come some black and brown people end up voting for, it's racism is so ingrained in this country on every level, education, yeah. right? Uh, as far as getting employment, right? I mean, all the way across the board, it's ingrained, it's so ingrained when it's, when it's getting ready to be taken away or it's threatened, people stand up against it. And I think, I think yes. at this moment in time, I'm disappointed because I thought we have elevated our consciousness more than this. You, you know what I'm saying? It was more of a disappointment. Yeah. I wasn't really angry. I'm like, I thought we really made a shift. I thought, you know, the George Floyd incident really made people do some introspective mm -hmm. work inside. Yeah. What do I really believe? You know, all the stuff that I was told and, and now I'm seeing it right in front of my face. Now, now, can I listen to the uh, the people that are going through these experiences, right? I know that it's true now. I've seen it with my own eyes. So I thought that would wake way more people up. But I think what's going on is I think that people, even at a subconscious level, are feeling threatened that their lifestyle will be taken away if others are given the same opportunities. I think they want that privilege and if they feel that everybody has the same opportunities, something would be taken from them. Their lifestyle will be lessened or whatever mm -hmm. case, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't wanna lose my stance in this society, my place in this society. And I think that's why I was just hearing that, that white women, 55% were still voting for Trump. Mm. But you, gotta, you gotta understand that mm. they have white sons. They have white husbands, right? They're always going to do things to benefit their life and not have that understanding for others that are going to having a different earthly experience. So for, for me, I was just more so disappointed. Yeah. And, and, and when in, in especially the vegan community as well, because to me, veganism is about unconditional love for all beings. That's yes. why I view veganism, right? Just, yes. just a, a love, loving others that that don't even know you're loving them, right? Mm -hmm. Loving other, I love people that are even putting these systems in place because it's all part of a system. Yeah, and I really believe when the system, when when people, just like your ego, when your ego starts to go, things get really rough. The waters get really turbulent, right? And mm -hmm. I, right now, we're at this super important crossroads, this point right now, what are we going to do? I mean, are we really going to uh, uh, live what we speak? Or oh, I'm not racist. Well, really, you're not, right? Because your actions don't align with your words, right? We have to understand that if you vote for this guy, everything comes with it. It's just not that one thing that you voted for him. Yes. Everything comes with it. Yes, yes. Right? So you have this cognitive dissonance, right? That you can look at this whole scene that we see is so obvious. Yes. The words that come out of his mouth, how he treats people and so on and so on and so on and go, no, he's not this. No, he's not that. A matter of fact, he does more for the black community than anybody ever in the history of the world. He's the least, least racist person on the planet. He respects women. How can you look at th this man and see what he's doing and say these things? You have to separate yourself you're not telling the truth to yourself. Yeah. Right? So as as my job, I believe my job is to stay in that loving place, but then take, take action from that loving place. Mm -hmm. I cannot be silenced. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna give you a perfect example. I posted on my page, like you were saying earlier, and someone disagreed with what I said, what I posted, which is okay, you can disagree with me. I'm okay with that. But at the end of that comment, she said, if you don't know the facts, then shut up. So she had on my page hmm. felt like she was given the right to tell me to shut up and dribble. Right. Yeah. Your opinion only matters if it aligns with my opinion. And, and that's coming from a white woman telling me to shut up on my page. I think this present has emboldened people. I, th yeah. I think he's made it OK to be violent towards people that disagree with you. For a perfect, how can you watch the Biden bus thing on the freeway and go, that's okay? Yeah. I'm still going to vote for this man that has these types of people also vote for him. I'm going to tell you one thing. He also, right now. He also 
followed that up by tweeting about it, condoning it. So it isn't even just, it isn't even just that they did that. It's like, he's like applauding them for doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, along, you know, along, with the, along with the white power uh, tweet he retweeted and yes. everything else is like, and then you can, you can, I had a conversation. I'm no longer friends with him on, on, on in, in social media. He was a, a Latino, a Trump, uh, vegan. And I had a conversation with him on the phone. I said, call me, let's talk about this because this is crazy, right? How can you be all these things and support this guy for one that don't even like you support this guy that's rolling back animal ag, right? These regulations that we put to try to save these animals, even wild animals that are going extinct. Yes. Like all this and you're an ethical vegan, right? So every single thing, that I said, even the stuff that he knows that this guy actually said that come came from his mouth, he justified it somehow. And it just blew up. Do you Go think ahead. Stockholm syndrome though? Because I'm starting to feel like other oppressed groups are kind of like, well, I'm not the most oppressed. So it's like, if I agree with what the majority of non-oppressed people agree with, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden, I'm over here and the most oppressed is over here because I never want to be George Floyd. So I'm going to, I'm going to go on this side. Mm -hmm. I feel like now the, the excuses they give is less of like purposeful racism on with some people only saying some, and it's more of Stockholm syndrome protection of the oppressor so that they don't have to experience oppression with, which is still racism, but it's like, it's like a mental, like, What's that? Internalized. Tur totally. Internalized it becomes racism. Like psychosis because they're yeah. they're so purposefully trying to protect themselves, like the the Latin vegan, and I know many Armenians that live near me that are literally like uh, several of them fled, you know, Turkey, based on the same type of actions of a president there. And then they're going to come here and then vote, turn around and vote for Trump. Like, it's just, it's literally like this swap of, okay, well, I don't, I, I need to assimilate so badly because when I'm likable and assimilate with the, the white non-oppressed groups, then I'm not going to become the most oppressed. And it's possible that Latin vegans that are no longer immigrants that ha are actually have become citizens, probably mm -hmm. did, born into parents who are immigrants. It's possible that they literally think that it's caged kids or will never happen to them. So they don't want to be um, have a knee on their neck on the ground. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm noticing something that is really weird. The excuses are the same excuses when you're talking to somebody who is in a really bad relationship. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. You're like, you will literally say anything to, to be okay with them uh, being abusive to you and everybody else. It, uh, you know, it's, um, it's like Stockholm syndrome. It's like, like battered wife syndrome. Abuse. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. Yep. That, and makes, then, that makes sense. Yeah, and then exactly. these white supremacists, including Trump, they tokenize these people. If you look at you know Trump's speeches, oh, it's so terrible. They always put you know uh, yeah. black people in front, and even these white supremacists, they go, "Oh, I have a black friend, and he supports yes. Trump," as yes. if that means anything. Like, so what? It doesn't like just because a black your black friend supports Trump doesn't make Trump an ethical, a moral That's right. person. That's right. I, I Everyone, really you're in. in. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna come. Excuse me, I didn't mean to interrupt. One okay. of it. You can be married to a black person and be a racist. For sure. You can be married yes, to can. a black person and be a racist. You can be a black person and be against your own kind. Okay. And yes. all the time. Yes. So it's, it's not a disqualifier. Your yes. black man doesn't doesn't say you're not a racist. Your black That's spouse right. doesn't say you're not a racist. I've seen it personally where someone had a black spouse and they would talk racist stuff all the time. They just like you. They yes. don't like the race. There's and I and Connie may know this is I'm like I said, I'm playing catch up from my whole life with politics. But she's a Republican and she had I guess she has like an adopted black son. And she's like, oh, you know, I expect my son to get pulled over like she was 
allowing for that as, a, as an excuse by saying, oh, of course they're going to pull him over because he's black. You know, I, I know that that like it is it, crazy to me. And I mean, online. there's a hmm? online, online somebody. This is no, this is someone. This was at the um, at the Republican um, convention, oh, gotcha. and she spoke and, and said this. And I was just like, and to them, they it, you know, they're all like, yeah, like it made sense to them. And to me, it's like completely crazy. I'm, I'm I feel sorry for her son because for she's sure. putting that energy onto him. And she to wants further to what, act like his savior, and she still has anti blackness. She's going to teach him to have anti blackness and have self hatred towards it. Um, yes. yes. Not yes. loving him, like making conditions to love him. She's already making conditions. So we have we have black parents. This is what a lot of other races don't even know. So I have two sons. They're both darker skinned than me. Right. One's one's about to be twenty nine, and then one's about to be. Uh, 26. So one was 19 at the time and one was 16 at the time. And I'm driving back on the one-on-one and we're driving through a very rural area that have, you know, a lot of uh, a racist area. We got to drive through this area. So before we get to this one town that we always go through and it's really sketchy and people get pulled over all the time, I had to talk with them and people don't realize this is our reality. I told both these boys, I said, look, you two are starting to look like men and you have to understand when it comes to law enforcement and others that you're going to be started, you're going to start to be treated differently. This is what we got to talk about, right? Yeah. It's happened to us for no reason. We know it's going to happen. At one point in your life, you will get messed with. And if you don't have right action, you could be dead. Yes. So you have, to have this conversation. As bad yes. as you want to talk back, as bad as you want to, whatever you want to do, your life is more important than that. Okay. That's right. So this is maybe two hours after I had this talk. Two hours. I put mm. into the gas station in this town I'm talking about. I go inside. I'm in line waiting to pay for gas. I look up. There's a sheriff next to my car. And my son had got out the car to stretch his legs. Right. This conversation I had with them just because my oldest son, he liked to say what he want to say. Right. And that's mm -hmm. really what I was talking to when I was having this conversation, because my younger, my, the, the 16 year old at the time, he's very quiet. You know, he probably wouldn't say anything. So the oldest one was outside stretching. I seen the cop out there pulled up on the car. And you could tell he was talking to my son like this. Mm -hmm. I get back in. I get back. I said, what was that all about? Right. And I was so happy that I had this conversation with him before this happened because it could have turned out different. We all could have had some, all of us could have had something done to us. So this police is coming down this way, not even the same direction. He hits the main street, flips a U-turn in the middle of the street. Now my son is just leaning against the car, stretching his legs since we have a long trip. Comes back around through the parking lot, pulls up on the side of my boy and said, is there a problem? Yeah. Is there a problem? And my son said, he just looked at him and said, no. And that dude said, that's what I thought. And pulled off. Yeah. Now, if my son would have said, why are you messing with me? Or whatever, if he would have said anything different than what he said, I promise you, he would have called for backup. It would have been a mess. Yes, it would have been. Everybody would have got yanked out of that car. Everybody yes. probably would have got beat. Everybody went to, went to jail. You know, it, it could have even got worse than that, right? Yeah. And so, this is the outcome of what could get worse if Trump is elected. Because like you said, the emboldenment of what will go even further. I've already been experiencing micro microaggressions as of late at a faster rate than I ever have in my entire life. And so with this type of behavior, you know, you'll have this even more because I think it was the New York City Police Department that actually endorsed, came out publicly and endorsed Trump, which I was like totally shocked. Um, and so when you have them endorsing someone like this, of course, they're going to feel bold. And like you said, your son has every right to say, why are you asking? Exactly. Why are you asking? He's a human being. But like you said, had he done that, and people will say all the time, oh, he shouldn't have right, talked right. back. 
he should, but you know, that's dehumanizing. And they don't understand what that does to a person's spirit and how that is a blow. And I want to ask Varun, you're in um, Canada, Toronto, and I've always, I get invitations all the time. People are like, just get the hell out of U.S. and come here because it's so much better. You don't have to deal with all that crap. So from the outside looking in, like, what do you see? Because you probably have a fresher and different type of perspective. Uh, yeah, Gona, thanks for the question. Uh, so in Canada, I would uh, first like to express that I totally, totally agree with Connie Spence regarding, you know, the conservative and the right wing governments and party support of animal ag. And it has been going on for, for decades. So for example, uh, although things are relatively way, way, way better in Canada, but when it comes to politics, it's always conservatives and conservative parties pushing for more animal agriculture, more, more animal flesh cons consumption, and more farming. So I'll give you this example. Um, in December, uh, conservative government in Ontario, they introduced an ag-gag bill called 156. And it was, yeah, it was introduced. And on June uh, 18, June 17th, it was passed the conservative government in Ontario passed it, Doug Ford government. Two days later, Regan Russell and other activists were at outside Fearman Slaughterhouse to protest this new legislation. So what happened was she was, she was violently struck and killed by the pig transport truck. And that bill is so, so draconian, so vile, like mm -hmm. it all, not only it makes it uh, illegal to blow the whistle on farms, it also makes it illegal to bear witness to animals in transport. So if you interact with animals in transport truck, even if you're on a public property, you can be fined up to $25,000. Regan was really, really concerned about this bill. And uh, her, her husband, Mark, often talks about it that, you know, before going to that vigil on that on that morning, she was telling Mark that she was really, really concerned about this bill and mm -hmm. uh, how it was going to affect the, you know, constitutional rights of uh, protesters. So that's what happened. So the, the the truck driver apparently felt emboldened that oh, now the government is on my side. I can do whatever I want, and he killed her struck and killed her and then after killing her he didn't even stop he dragged her for 50 feet um, so i would like to take this opportunity to uh tell invite all the viewers to the documentary screening uh the the, the name of the documentary is there was a killing by art links director sean monson uh on the 7th at 3 p.m est it talks about this so i think when when a lot of animal rights people say that, oh, it doesn't matter, you know, just vote for whoever you want. As long as, you know, you, you're vegan, it doesn't matter you whom you vote for. It does matter. Your vote matters. Whom well, you vote for. liberation, it can't happen without policy and system change. So it has to be political and the justice part has to be there. But even Regan's death, getting justice for her, you can't buy a vegan burger and get justice for Regan it really does require, like veganism can't solve these systemic policy problems. The fact that the truck driver is not arrested, the fact that the truck driver you know, could do all of those things, the fact that the next truck driver could do those things, those are all systemic aspects to why veganism it ends up being political. Yes, veganism is a moral, you know, stance. And yes, we do it to try to liberate animals. But when you realize that the system is up against you and preventing you from doing that to liberate animals, therefore you have to get political. I want to segue before I leave to a comment on your comment section that happens over and over again that I'm not going to tolerate in this movement. I'm not going to tolerate while I'm sitting on this call either. Peter Maresh, I'm talking to you. You said, I thought this might be an enlightening conversation about racism, but it appears to be yet another circle jerk of intersectionalists trying to hijack the movement and it's at odds with the stated reason desire of this page. First off, I can tell quickly that you don't know what you're talking about. First off, 
a circle jerk of intersectionalist, we came on here to discuss the election. If you decide that animals only is your route, that you don't care about humans at all, you've decided veganism doesn't include, include humans, fine. I'm telling you, $68 billion in bailouts this year and 30 billion last year from Trump has wiped all of our veganism clean, all of it. It doesn't matter how many vegan burgers you ate. It doesn't matter how many people you veganized. It wiped it all clean. So it is political when you vote for Trump. So calling us a circle jerk of intersectionalists that don't know what they're talking about, you need to sit down. Anybody in the vegan movement that takes on this stance needs to sit down because you're leading us in the wrong direction. The direction is to get political, is to know which politicians federally, locally, and at every level are on our side. Stop voting for people who aren't. Yes, Trump has racism, and you're like, oh, it's over here. I don't give a shit about racism. But if you care about animals and you care about liberation, you're going to stop treating people like us and talking down to us. We are part of this movement. We are the number one fastest growing part of this movement. I'm not going to tolerate it. I don't tolerate it in, my, in the organizations that I have. I don't take money. Memberships from people are this way. I don't, have, I don't deal with volunteers who are this way. And I'm not going to deal with it while I'm on a call right now, taking time out of my day to discuss why we need to get political to people like you who are uneducated and don't understand the system at all. So, well, said, said. I get I deal with that stuff all the time and this movement's not going to deal with it. I'm not going to sit quiet while I see people like Peter Moresh on here trying to talk down to us while we're sitting here talking about something serious. Monk talks about something serious that his son went through and all you have to tell us that we're a circle jerk. The circle jerk is male patriarchy in the vegan movement. That's the circle jerk. You need to start listening to the black and brown and female community that is the le actual leaders of this movement. Well, freaking right. said. Thank cuz I saw the comment and I'm like, oh, I'm like I'm not I wasn't even going to address it, but thank you so much. I do not tolerate that stuff. Nowhere, not on my social media page, nowhere. I do not tolerate that attitude where they're they're basically marginalizing us more and trying to silence us when we have the platform and talking about things that are actually educating people, moving people towards animal liberation. Yes. And I have to say, and I'm, you know, what? Kind of, I'm glad you sent me this point because it's a perfect segue if you have to leave. But uh, Connie is unapologetic to oppressive ideologies. Can you tell? Oh, well, I know personally, we, you know, and not to get personal, we had a, a falling out over it. Like, even with me, she had a low tolerance for something that I had a tolerance for. So she does not play games <laughs> when it comes to certain things. So I really respect that. So thank you so much. Thank I wish you so much. Yeah, so powerful. Yeah. Honey, right, right before you got on there, Tony, right before you got on there, I was just about to uh, applaud you for the work that yeah. you do. And now you just put a, a two, you put a ten on that. I applaud you even more yes. for, for standing up for what's right and educating That's people. That's right. You know, every time I see your post, there's some 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 nuggets you can take from it. There's some things that you can learn every single time. At every so when I look at your post, I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Right. So you keep doing what you're doing because what you're doing is amazing. And don't let people like this pull you into the mud with them. You know what I'm saying? Protect your energy. I know we. it's easy for us to get upset and angry, and that's okay. But let that go. Just like a wild animal that gets chased. As soon as that chase is over, let it go. Right? For Don't sure, hold on. I agree. After this moment, and thank you for the reminder, I needed to call that out only because anybody joining this either now or later is going to go there and they're going to review that. And because it's a, it's a male saying that, they're going to be like, yeah, you know what? I might not agree with everything they say, so I'm just discredit everything, even though we're giving so much education, yeah. information, even personal information. And I needed to address that because on my page, your page, and everybody's page that I see, anytime brown and black people talk, we constantly have to hear these, these same cookie cutter rookie male vegans trying <laughs> to put us on the side and silence us. And I've had it. We're the majority. I've had it with these, with these people trying to take over our movement and tell us that we're like doing something negative. We're not. We're the ones bringing the entire group to an unoppressive state. That's what we're doing. 
and you and like Monk said, you do it well. There's nobody in the movement that I know that can touch you as far as the knowledge that you have. You, we were outside on the corner, and I was frustrated because I couldn't connect the pieces. Like I needed to point the finger at who's running this planet, and you broke it down to me in like two seconds. I was like, "Well, thank you." So, like Monk said, thank you so much, and thank you for thank you so that much. nice little. Uh, Chin check there. That was great. <laughs> I've never I've been on a panel before. So, I mean, I obviously knew that it's not the the reason that needed to be done is because we cannot let this toxic behavior continue to penetrate or umbrella the, the work that we have. It's an energy suck to Monk, Monk's point. And it's really what it's doing is it's energy sucking us away from doing what we need to do and reaching our goals. And so I put that person in check simply because it's so common and it's like the same entitlement and emboldenment that that we're dealing with on a federal level. It's like it radiates within society and even the vegan movement. Anyway, so Agriculture Fairness Alliance is a lobbying group. We have legislation and a lobbyist. We are trying to create systemic change federally. We are likely going to hire a second lobbyist systems of I'm just going to really fast systems that need to be changed that no matter how many vegans are created, these systems won't change the NIH with animal testing. It's the National Institute of Health. While Vegan Justice League and Agriculture Fairness Alliance will push legislation in the, in the future, other vegans should be doing stuff like that locally. Um, just going outside of a university telling them to not test on animals when that professor was specifically hired to bring in money from the from the National Institute of Health. Like we have to find that money trail and we have to create policy change there. Um, when you see uh, foie gras getting banned, you see fur getting banned, you, you applaud these things and you think it's because a lot of vegans are buying um, Miyoko's cheese beyond burgers and others that's not what's happening what's happening is is yes that creates some social awareness but there are actual lobby groups new york city has a lobbying group they're pressuring um you know politicians there california and los angeles have lobbying groups and they're pressuring there those policy changes happen because of these lobbying groups our lobbying group focuses federally the second system is anything related to the usda and our taxes taken out for subsidies and bailouts. We are working on that, but other groups need to be working on it too. Subsidies happen through the farm bill. It basically makes the price of meat cost very little because our taxes are paying for all the overhead costs. Bailouts come when, they, when the meat and dairy industry lose and they're receiving losses from veganism and other things and a bailout wipes clean all those losses so that the next year they keep producing the same amount or more as before. Um, so those systems absolutely need to be changed, whether it's through our lobbying group or, or um, you know, other lobbying groups. We definitely need more members to support us so we can increase our army of lobbyists. And lastly, um, you know, there are other things that, that we need to be looking at as a movement. One of the most critical pieces is food accessibility. Getting vegan products priced at a level that can make them on every store shelf, advertises veganism better than thousands of activism groups. Activism groups are important, absolutely. We need to be doing that. But what in tandem, if we are able to address food accessibility, we're able to address hunger, health, environment, and about a dozen other things. So I'd like to see more vegans and more organizations putting a, like a subtitle on maybe their environmental thing that we're gonna focus on trying to figure out how to make food accessible in this local area, right? Because like I said, it, it allows you to speak to people, right? Say somebody comes to the SAVE movement and they bear witness of a pig and they're like, oh my gosh, I wanna go vegan, but they have a family of six and they go to the grocery store and they realize like, I don't know if I can actually achieve this, right? We need to be able to close that loop so that your activism can, can literally actualize at the grocery store. So food accessibility, make it our number one priority. And I promise you that veganism will be mainstream faster than any, any other way um, that we've seen as of lately. 
Excellent. Thank you so much for that. And I totally agree because food accessibility is something that's becoming very, very important to me. So uh, thank you for adding that piece. Thank you so much, Connie. Thank you guys. And I, I will see you again. I'm going to be logging off. I have to get back to work. All right. Nice, All nice right. to see you again, Connie. Thank you for that fire. <laughs> Connie Spence, <laughs> vegan just later. Love you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I love you too. See ya. <laughs> that was great. Um, Varun, um, I still wanted to find out from you on the outside looking in, what do you think about the United States and the election system? Like what do we, we have to be looking real crazy to the rest of the planet right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and a lot of people think that uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people think that, uh, although things are way, way, way uh, worse for you, uh, people, it still has uh impact on people around the world like us decides you know the value of dollar and other stuff like there's so many wars going on around the world and us is behind it so although yes you know it's, it's really hard for you know people living in the united states but uh we also need to keep in mind that the us election is important to everyone because yes. us policies affect people uh, especially in uh, some areas, for example, in the Middle East and stuff like that, where you know these countries keep getting bombed. So, yeah, yeah. I I had a um, comment on on my one of my pages yesterday from a lady in Denmark who had said that she was very disappointed and shocked by how people were voting here in the United States because based on what they could see clearly. Like the fact that everything is so close in most of these states and so tight, like you were talking about, Mo, like the fact that people could still, you know, want to want to vote a certain person in is just I, I, I don't really have words. Like, I think it was you. Somebody was talking about like draconian. I'm like, that's got to be what it is. It's got to be. Gag law. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Even yeah, beyond the law, it's, it's got to be something. Yeah, when you yeah. if you look at it, if you don't have a a, a a position in this country, a stance in this country, if you're looking at it from another country, th the madness is clear, right? Yes. But when you it's ingrained in you, when it's ingrained in you, like white people have been privileged for hundreds of years, and black people have been oppressed for hundreds of years. You see what I'm saying? So if your privilege runs that deep, you don't want it to change. Yeah. Even on a subconscious level, like I was saying, it's like my way of life needs to stay my way of life. Even though I, I don't acknowledge the privileges that I get, you actually know they're there. Yeah. And you don't want that. You don't want that to change. Right. Even, even if other people are sacrificed because of it. That's right. That's and, right. And, and that's the unfortunate part, right? Your yeah. lifestyle. And it may not even change at all, right? Your lifestyle is more important than a whole whole groups of people, their lives, literally. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, like life and death, literally. Yes. Your lifestyle is more important than that. And, and the truth of the matter is, they wouldn't lose anything. It would just be other people that actually have a shot to, to have the same life that you have. Yeah. With the same privileges that you have. Wouldn't that make a better society altogether? Wouldn't everybody be a little bit happier? Right? Yeah. We could all come to some type of understanding where we could all get a piece of the pie. We could all be treated fairly. Right? We all could is have, you know, even on a criminal level, we get bigger sentences. We have, there's more of us that are, are incarcerated that are innocent. Yeah. You know, just all the way across the board, we're getting it. We're getting this yes. treatment. Yes. All we want. We're not trying Even to take Nista. anything from you. We're not trying to take anything from you. We Even just want Nista to on go. YouTube response. They say again, because we are living in a very systemic racist country, again, tribalism. I would like to respond to that. Is that when when Biden, sorry, not Biden, uh Mike Pence and Harris, they had the debate. Mm -hmm. Pence said it really clearly that there's no institutionalized or systemic racism in America. Hmm. Again, 
when people in the position of power, they do not acknowledge there's a problem, there's a huge problem. Yes. And, and that's the difference between our country and a lot of other countries that had similar, uh, uh, their countries were, you know, built in, in similar ways. They all have acknowledged what they have done, the damage they have done, the death they have caused. Yeah, the they have caused people are still dealing with to these to this day. You know what they do? They take down the, the statues of hatred. Right. They they give opportunities to those that have been oppressed for so long programs and things like that. Right. We're still in some states. Right. Still flying the, the, the Confederate flag. Right. We're, we still have those statues of hatred up. We still have. We haven't even acknowledged mm -hmm. what this country has done. And that's a, we can never heal until this is at least acknowledged. This is what happened. Right. It wasn't yeah. me personally that did it, but the system was set up and we got to we got to do something about the system. Yes. I like to know um, those that are viewing right now, if you are from another country, what are your thoughts about what you see, how you view the United States? I'm just curious to know if you're from another country and you're watching, what do you think about the United States? Because I've seen so many people like the lady in Denmark who said she was disappointed. And, you know, I read I'm always because I'm always researching the exit out of here. I'm like, I, you know, that might be my next move <laughs> to another country because I know I was programmed to believe this was the best country on earth. It has the best democracy. But um, as I talk to other people that like Santiago, Chile, well, or Chile in general, do you know that they had a huge rebellion and their rebellion was because uh, they raised the prices on, uh, subway transportation. So they rebelled. I mean, they had pol police, people got hurt. I heard some people got killed and they decided to rewrite the entire constitution to make it fair for everybody. I'm like, well, that's an amazing solution. Like, can we do that here? Like they're rewriting their entire constitution as a solution. As I've heard that South America has, you know, uh, one of the best governments um, in the world. And so I'm coming out of that programming thinking that this is the only place that I can live where I can walk around free. And I'm starting to, you know, change that belief system that there's other places on this planet. I think that there's, there's colorism and racism embedded everywhere because it's just grown like that, but there's not the worry of survival, uh, worrying about your life worrying about your livelihood and being criminalized for just being yourself. Uh, so Gwena, there's a comment from uh, Veganista. They say, I'm from the inner city. I beg to, I beg to differ, very racist, oppressive system. I think they're talking about LA. And oh, then, okay. yeah. And then I, there I is- I agree the, with that. I agree. I don't think, I, I don't know what, what part she's disagreeing with, but, no, I totally agree with that. Like I grew up in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, um, most of my, you know, up until I was like in my thirties. And I thought that that's how the world was. Um, you know, I, I watched the news at six o'clock. I watch it in the morning. Like I was in a program and then I moved to Miami and I saw people that were my color that were Cuban and that were, other cultures and I had never seen that in my life. Like I didn't, I, I went into like a depression because I had no idea the world was in Cleveland. And so, but what I found was like, there was a whole other layer of racism that I didn't even know existed. And then I've lived in different places. Then fast forward, I come here uh, one thing I will say about Los Angeles, I'm not sure about the rest of the state of California, but I know I've never like fought for anything or spoken up or marched or protest. When I came here, I'm like, golly, this is the most marching and protesting this place I've ever been in my entire life. Like these people stand up for their freaking rights out here. Like they do not play games in California. And so that gave me like, you know, power and then to do it with other people and to see like, you know, you can stand up as in Cleveland, we didn't stand up to anything. Whatever was handed to us, we just took, at least at that time. I don't know what's going on now. 
So, you know, just to be able to be in that position, but I would much rather be someplace where the government actually cares and has compassion for its citizens and for the people that they're supposed to help, you know, protect and take care of versus this system where it's really, it's a pay to play type system here. Someone named Vegan C says, sorry, the idea of Trump being reelected makes me very tense. So they haven't stated where they are from, but yeah. Yeah, makes me tense too, because my concern is that um, one thing that he said that he, he may do is, you know, like with Black Lives Matter, I'm concerned he's gonna make it a terrorist organization. Even though they have yet to ever make the KKK a terrorist organization, but they will make Black Lives Matter a terrorist organization. I'm a member of the chapter here in Los Angeles. It is incredibly loving, encompassing of all races. When I go to these meetings, there's white, black, Latino, Asian. We eat together, we, we, we laugh, we talk. Um, it, it's actually a really amazing um, chapter. And I'm like, why would they wanna criminalize a loving community that all they want is peace for their black brothers and sisters. So that's so, a huge concern. Uh, Vegan C say, says that they're from Ontario, Canada. So from outside the United States and they're really tense about yeah, if Trump re gets reelected. Not surprising. I'm looking at some of these comments here as well. Um, Huh. Veganista said liquor store stock with white bread and sugar. You got that right, uh, Veganista. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, it's it's a really interesting um, time that we're in. And, you know, my concern is that, as he stated before, if he loses, he's not leaving. And I'm concerned with what's going to happen outside of my doors on either direction. If he wins, I feel like the microaggressions will turn into macroaggressions because it's like, oh, we won, we're in charge, go back, you know, get in your place. If he loses, I'm concerned there's going to be some vigilantes out there that are going to, you know, already imbalance and don't have anything to lose and want to, you know, there's some, I've, I've read where a lot of times where you have like these shooters and people that do these crazy things, they just want to be in the history books. They want to go down as somebody who did this and who did that, and they'll do it at any cost. So those are my concerns on, on either side. I don't really feel safe too much right now, you know, going out there, especially after the decision has been announced. I feel you. I feel yeah. you on that. And yeah. like you were telling me earlier, you got Trump, Trump people all around you. Yeah, my neighborhood, there's signs. I usually like will go walking. And for whatever reason, like after I start seeing, there's like signs almost on every house. And when I see those signs, I don't see like a voter. What I see and feel is someone that is okay with me being harmed. And so where for someone, it may just look like, oh, it's just a sign, they're just voting. No, that's not what I see. I, I see oppression, I see uh, a threat, um, I see all types of things when I see those signs. So yeah, it's, I haven't been walking in a, in a long while over here because it just, I don't know what to expect from people. Like I said, the microaggressions are really intensifying. Those are the things that people don't take into consideration, especially the vegan community when they say they're voting. There was a lady that I did, um, she volunteered with me at an amazing event uh, earlier this year. And she's been vegan for like 30 years. She left something with me and I had to go and drop it off at her house. And she was just wonderful, amazing. And she was telling me all the money she made in the stock market. And she's like, and she was like vegan for the animals and vegan for health. Like I'm talking ethical, physical, moral, spiritual. And she hits me with the, yeah, Trump is so good for the economy. I've made so much money since he's been in office. And I was like, oh. Uh, I would disagree with the, uh... You know, these people, they support someone who is so harmful to other animals. And then they have the audacity, audacity to say that I'm being for the animals. And why are you supporting someone who is so, 
so oppressive to animals whose policies literally harm animals. Yeah, I think he, I don't know the exact what it was, but I do know that he allowed for um, his sons to go out and start uh, shooting elephants and, and things like that at one point. And it's just like, you know, that alone would make me not want to vote for a person like that. He doesn't care about, you don't have to, I don't care what your thought process, you know, good and well, this man does not care about any animals. Yeah. He cares about how they taste, but he does not care anything <laughs> about animals. Well, he rolled back yeah. regulations on, on big game, and I guess transporting them or something like that. I'm not 100% sure of what it was, but basically transporting big game from, from uh, other countries to here, he didn't roll back some regulations on that. Yeah. And all the regulations as far as, you know, uh, uh, how people are making, in, you know, creating energy and the coal. And he's just tearing everything down that was set up to, to protect this earth. Yeah. hundred percent. He's just rolling it all back. Like it's all money is the only thing that's important. It doesn't yeah. matter what we destroy on the way out. Yeah. And that is so crazy to me. Like yeah. he has kids, he has grandkids. Yep, they're going to be stuck with this. How selfish, how selfish do you have to be to not even want to leave something for your own grandkids? Yeah. And then he also doesn't care about the climate. And people don't understand that <laughs> if the climate is not protected, the animals are not protected. That's right. So I would like to uh, show oh. this comment by Powell. I hope I pronounce it correctly. I, I'm based in Australia and the news about the US election are everywhere. Why mm -hmm. one would ask? Well, because the US politics impacts the whole world, yes. whether we like it or not. Do I have trust for one politician or the other? Absolutely no. Neither of them will make things better for the animals or the environment. That's where we, the animal rights activists come in play. No one else will do the dirty job. Therefore, we can never be silent. We can never slow it down and must keep fight, must keep fight against. Or must keep fighting against or yeah, I get what he's saying. No, he's, I agree with him about, you know, of course I'm definitely, I want Biden and Harris to win, but I agree. Um, I don't feel like this particular um, position <laughs> that we keep fighting about and voting people in, um, save anything. I think it kind of keeps things status quo. Some just package it differently and operate a little bit more on the kinder side than the other, but it kind of keeps everything still, keeps the machine running constantly. I heard someone say, I, the best way I heard someone saying it this, this last time is like, I don't trust politicians, period. They're all in it for whatever, you know, reason they're in it for, right? They've never done the right thing by people of color period in this country. Let's get that out there right now. If, if they had, if any administ administration has ever done that, we wouldn't be talking about or dealing with the things we're dealing with right now. Yes. Right? So I heard someone say, you know what? I want Biden to win just to stop the bleeding. Yes. Just to stop the hatred, just to yes. stop the gasoline yes. pouring on the fire, just to yes. stop this this energy that's being created right now and the division, we just need to st stop the bleeding right now. Yes. And then regather and come and, and continue on to get these policies and things changed. But right now we got an open wound. Yes. We are bleeding out right now. We do not need another four years of this. Yes. More back, re rolling back more regulations, putting people in the office that are just like him. Yeah. Right? changing laws that are here to protect us, right? I mean, for the he told police to, to rough us up a little bit more. You know, I think you're too easy on them. You don't yep, think- I remember that. Atmosphere? You I don't remember that. You don't think this atmosphere, right? You had a police officer on duty at a polling station with a Trump mask on. Yes. It's the law. You can't do that. But he feels so emboldened yes. that he feels he can do that in his uniform with his gun on his side at a polling station. Yes. This is an environment he's creating. This is the bleeding that's going on. We need to stop the bleeding. Four more years of this, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? What, what, how, how, how safe are we going to be as people of color? That's why I said it's, you know, I've been looking at other countries. I'm like, if he, if he stays on, I don't want to live and live my whole life in fear. I was saying my age is, you know, my number is creeping up. I want to, I want to know what it feels like to be free. I want to know. I don't know what that feels like. I don't know what it feels like to just, I mean, I, I, I can put on the facade and I can shut things down in my mind and act as if, but I don't truly know what it feels like to not have oppression around the corner every time I turn around or go in a store and they not watch me or, you know, things like that. Like, I want to know what that feels like in this lifetime. And I don't know if that'll ever happen here. See, I don't think, Gwenna, you understand, but I don't think people fully understand. Yeah. On the, the stuff that we go through on a daily basis. Because they don't see it. So they, they don't, don't know. Understand it. Look, if I have a, if I, when I was a kid, if I had a, a, a white friend, I would have to ask that white friend, well, what are your parents like? Are they cool with black people? I don't want to come over there and, you know, be treated a certain way if your parents are racist. Yeah. These are the things we got to worry about. Oh, you want to go to a party? Well, who's going to be there? Yeah. Well, other people. If you move, think, if you, if you, move, move. you got to check the neighborhood to make sure right. what type other of neighborhood people don't it think is. Like yeah. this. Other yeah. people don't think like this every single day. We got to go. Is my race, wherever I'm going, is that going to have a negative impact? Should I not go to these places? Should I not be in these areas? Should I not go into this bar? Should I not go into this restaurant? You know, I go to towns where there's no black people and I'm like, should I even get out of the car? Yeah. This is an everyday thing. We have to be aware of where we go and what might happen if we go there. People yeah. don't understand this. People that never had to deal with stuff like this, they don't understand this. Yes. It, it's a factor every single day. It's yeah. something you can't take off. And that's when, when the people say blue lives matter, there are no such thing as a blue life. That's a job that you chose. Yes. And you can take off your uniform and nobody knows you're a cop. That's right. Your skin ain't coming off. Yeah. It's not a blue life. So stop it. You, right. you don't have to create the flag, don't do this, but you're taking the flag and painting it blue, right? The hypocrisy of it all. Yeah. Right? No, black lives don't matter. The same people saying, why black, why only black lives? You got a blue lives matter flag. Does that make any sense? None. Does that make None. one bit of sense? None. Yeah, and it's not even a necessary. I, I lost a friendship over that uh, recently. Someone said Blue Lives Matter. And, um, you know, I tried to be tolerant and, and, and push through the conversation with them. But then you hit me with some Candace Owens videos. I'm like, all right, I'm out of here. <laughs> That's the worst. Uh, Chris, Chris Eubanks says, today the U.S. officially withdrew from the Paris Climate Accord. So yeah, we're, we're on our own. We're on our own. You know, he's, uh, he's, 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 they're great chess players. Off. I got to <laughs> pick back off you said what you said. Mm -hmm. So someone sent you that. Someone sent me one too with her with them. So any person that you know, I'm not racist. I'm not this. I'm not that. Right. So 99 percent of black people, we are we are a high percentage in the 90s. Right. We all agree on the same thing, pretty much as far as the treatment of black people and so on and so forth. But they will grab those two or three people, public people in the public eye that are black to justify the black race. Look, this black person agrees with me. See, I'm not racist. Absolutely. Look at this. They always throw that little handful of people in there to justify or to, you know, yeah. to, to validate their point. And I'm like, this, just doing this is telling me how racist you are. Yeah. Because you're not taking the bulk of black people and giving, giving that as your opinion. Yeah. You're taking a very small percentage of black people that agree with you to use that black face to justify your anti-racism. Yeah. Exactly. And it's very, it's very, very disturbing to me. I think it's yeah. worse than anything. Don't show me a yeah. black face. Oh, well, I was like, what is that? Is that a, I, 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 thought was, <laughs> I thought it was a fox or something. I was like, what is that? 
You got a fox oh, just running around in the house? Aww. That's a bunny. Yeah, yeah. What's, what's Bunny's that. name? What's Bunny's name? Lewis. Lewis. Hey, Lewis. <laughs> that's, that's a cat with long ears. That's what that is. <laughs> Lewis, Lewis says it's time to end the end the show. He's ready for his Varun. Yeah, time. let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. <laughs> Well, this was great. Um, yeah, I learned so much and thanks so much for sharing your thoughts and perspectives. And thank you yeah. for having me on. And, and let me. Barun. 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 Yes. I, 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 nice meeting you uh, for the first time. I appreciate you guys. And thanks for having me on here because uh, these discussions need to not stop. 100%. Yes. You know, because you, a lot of, a lot of the, 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 conversations that were happening behind Breonna Taylor and all the un other senseless murders and things like that, they have slowed down, right? People only want to speak up for the moment and then it yeah. goes back to business as usual. Well, this moment, I'm not, I'm never going to shut up. That's right. I'm never going to be quiet. And, 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 and on a personal level, a personal level, wherever I go, I'm never going to be quiet. You can ask my wife that she knows I don't shut up. <laughs> so I'm gonna speak my mind, and I'm gonna speak it from the. I'm gonna speak from the heart, and not a place of judgment. But we have to use our voices, no matter what. Yeah, we cannot stop this thing. That's right. Right. No matter if they don't want to hear us or not, they're gonna hear us. They're gonna feel us. Silence right. is violence. That's right. That's right. And that's why I appreciated Connie because I was. I saw that comment, and I was like. I'm gonna have to rise above it, but she got it for me. <laughs> she went in. She went yeah. in, and I, that fed my soul. So yeah, Connie, if you're watching, thank you, darling. <laughs> um, and thank you, Varun, for um, navigating this. He's, you know, the the brains behind all this. So thank you so much, and, and thank, thank you, you for facilitating. You were so great. And, and <laughs> thank for, you for those of you are watching. This is our first official uh, panel discussion on ASM, and we'll be doing a lot, a lot of them in future. Yes. So keep following us. Yes. And yeah. Thanks, Gwena, and thanks, Monk. It was our pleasure to have you. Yeah. Thank you. Right. I'm so honored. Now it's the first show. I'm on there. Yeah. We'd love to have you. <laughs> More often. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Because he his story, Monk's story, is absolutely we like he said he's a transformational coach. Like he started with himself, like his transformation, how he became vegan wasn't even part of his plan, and he did it. And you know, for me to see a man of color that is compa not that black men aren't compassionate, but just to see one that went from that thug life to that compassion life and that can meditate and be be at peace that's that's a beautiful beautiful thing and we need more more of that and to be vegan on top of it and to be a bodybuilder a uh, natural physique bodybuilder <laughs> yeah it's just it's just simply amazing so he's definitely a unicorn in our movement and so yeah we hope to have you back on for for many more conversations yeah, that's, that's christopher, christopher says great discussion i hope this was recorded and saved <laughs> so christopher yes it, it'll be on uh on our facebook and youtube so you can watch it and thanks so much for watching and commenting. Yeah, thanks, Christopher. Thanks so much. Monk, All right. Uh, well, I don't even want, to, I don't want to end. I don't even want it to end, but it's got to end. <laughs> Monk, you wanted to say something. Uh, sorry, I interrupted. No, no, I was, I was just, I was just listening. I was just listening. Do you have a, a social media uh, page room? Yes. Uh, Instagram. I, 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 yes, yes, yes. We we'll add each it? other. We we'll add each other. each other already. Yes. Uh, I'll send you the link. Uh, okay, yeah. send me a send me a link. I will. Because uh, sometimes I don't even be knowing. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, it's time to wrap up because I have another yeah. call. I think so. Sorry, okay. I didn't know your message. <laughs> oh, he, yeah, you sent that message about an hour ago. <laughs> I didn't even see it. <laughs> you just kept on going. I said, oh, I guess it's your show. Let's go. <laughs> All right, y'all. Okay, thank you, everyone. Bye, bye. Peace. All right, bye. take care. Bye, bye. <laughs>